Hi, welcome back to the shed for the first episode of GGBO 2023. Now I'm not sure if I'm the last in the competition to make a start on their build, but I think I've got to be pretty close to it. I had intended to have this underway a lot sooner, that didn't happen. I'm sure we're going to be okay, but we haven't got much time, so let's get cracking. When I first started thinking about GGBO this year, I had in mind a build that I'm not going to go too far into because I've abandoned the idea because it would have been a novel approach and I might revisit it at some point. But I think given the time constraints involved in me starting so late this year, it isn't really an option. However, what I was planning to do really required me to have a quite angular body and that limited the choice of the style of guitar I was going to build. But then someone said in one of the comments of my videos, you've never really done like a shredder guitar. And I thought, yeah, that could be a thing. And then someone else said, why don't you do a V or an Explorer? Now I'm not the world's biggest V fan. It's not to say I won't ever build one, but I much prefer the idea of an Explorer. So this build is gonna be based on an Explorer. However, there will be a few alterations. Firstly, I think the Explorer looks absolutely huge. So I'm gonna scale mine back a bit. So I've come in kind of about half an inch-ish from around most of the body to make it just that little bit more compact. The other thing was, I thought I could do a neck through. I like neck throughs. I like the sonic quality of the neck through. And I really enjoyed the Firebird build that I did. And I thought, well, perhaps we could do a mashup of the two. Perhaps we could have the construction of the Firebird with that raised central section in the body and two thinner wings, but in the shape of a slightly smaller Explorer. So that is what I'm going to go for. However, it won't be the standard Explorer configuration. I'm not going to have the switch in the lower horn. I think that's kind of like really far out of the way to be reaching for. So I'm going to have it in a more ergonomic position in the lower bout here and this is going to be quite a big departure for me because it's not going to be like a, a standard tunematic bridge setup but i'm not going to go too far into that just yet it's going to be humbucker equipped i want quite a high output pickup involved i'm not sure if i need two though i am very much a bridge pickup guy i very rarely go to a neck pickup is it worth having one is it better to have a really, really good quality high output bridge pickup and forgo the neck pickup? Also, I strongly believe that the absence of a bridge pickup affects the tonal qualities of the guitar. There are some theories that the lack of magnetic pull on the strings in this area kind of allows them to move more freely and to continue moving more freely, which in turn affects the tone. I don't know how much evidence there is for that, but it might be worth just putting the one pickup in and seeing if it does have any effect. So that's up in the air a little bit, maybe one pickup. Let me know in the comments what you think. And in terms of materials, it's going to be quite a bit of mahogany, quite a bit of maple. So I've got some sections of mahogany that can be cut down for elements of the neck through. I've got a big board of somewhat flamey maple for the rest of the neck through section. I've also got some big bits of veneer in black and a very pale, almost white color, which I think will form elements of the neck through. And I've got some bits of wenge, which I think I've definitely got a bit that can make a nice fretboard and I've got a couple of bits that I think would look really nice as a face on this central section that will be raised. The wings are mahogany, but I've got some very, very nice flamey, quilty, ripply maple veneer that I'm gonna use on the front of those just to dress this whole thing up. And I think the contrast between the dark wenge and that maple will make this look absolutely spot on. There is a second option for this central section and the fretboard. And that's some Zebrano. But I'm thinking, will that give me the same kind of contrast with the maple as the wenge would? 
I think possibly with the Zebrano, it might look a little bit too plain and insipid. I don't know. I'll have to think about that. Or you could also let me know in the comments which one you would go with. But before we can cut any of that wood down and start preparing this central block, we actually need to prepare a set of plans to work from. I got this plan from the internet. There's no dimensions or anything on it. So all I'm gonna use this for is to establish my outline shape and then I'll make a more detailed plan myself. So to get that started, we need to get some tracing paper set up and start getting this outline traced out. Okay, so there's a basic shape drawn out. I've got center line, I've got the theoretical position for my bridge, I've got the theoretical position for my knot, I've got a line there roughly where the fretboard will end. I might extend that a little bit further, I might put the additional frets onto the board, I don't know yet, we'll have to see. There's no immediate rush to make a decision on that yet. I've also got the two lines drawn in that will represent the center block and then these two elements will be the two wings of the guitar. I'm undecided what I'm going to do with the headstock at the moment. I might go with the traditional Explorer headstock, I might do something different, but in reality, we don't need to worry about that just yet. So the next step in this is we need to make some templates from this plan. I don't actually think I'll need that many. I'm just going to make a template for the top and the bottom wings at this stage. I will need to make one for the headstock once I've decided what I'm going to do. So realistically, that means I need to get another sheet of tracing paper on top of this, trace out these two elements that I'm going to make the templates from, stick them to some MDF, and get them cut out.
and there we have the templates for the top and bottom wings. So that's the first couple of elements of this build underway. Next up is we need to start cutting and cleaning up a load of strips of wood so that we can form a centre block that's going to go right the way through here and form the centre of the body and the neck. However, that's going to be an absolute ton of work. So that's a job for the next episode. So I'll leave this one here. So as normal, smash that like button if you've enjoyed this. If you're a new viewer or haven't already done so, make sure you hit that subscribe button. I'll be back in a couple of days time with the mother of all multi-lamb neck glue ups. So I'll look forward to seeing you then. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye-bye.